Today I'm going to be installing a dog door on the outer screen door of my house. One challenge with having a pet is they need to go outside just like we need our bathroom breaks. Even with Baron, who can go for 12 hours in between breaks, there's still times where I have to be gone longer than that. What I've been resorting to is just propping open the main door and having the screen door propped open so that he can go in and out as well. The problem is when the Baron can get in and out, that means that flies, mosquitoes, other bugs, potentially I'll end up with a skunk or possum in here, can get inside. A traditional dog door kit doesn't really make sense for this house. Part of it is because he's big enough, it would have to come up to here, and if you were installing it, you'd be cutting into glass and it'd be kind of messy. If you had just a solid door, it'd be a little bit easier to buy one of the kits, cut into it, and install the dog door. The house is actually brick outside, so it doesn't make sense to try to cut something out here either, especially for him being a bigger dog. Instead of starting with full kits, what I did is just ordered a couple different replacement flaps to see what size works best. What's the size? Now, as you can see with Baron, <laughs> he's about this size. He needs the bigger door flap. So that's what I'm gonna install. It's always easier to go big and then cut it down to size if you need, as opposed to starting too small and then having air gaps or bug gaps. So with this being kind of my starting point, I'm gonna start measuring it out on the screen door and see what I can do. In theory, once the dog door's in place, it should be fairly well sealed around those edges. I have the glass I can put down. I can leave this door open. So yes, I might lose a little bit heat outside, but at least it'll keep the bugs out for the most part. I still need to maintain the shock here because you need that for swinging the door in and out. As you can see, this is just about the right width and it's just a little bit tall. So I'll have to trim a little bit at the bottom probably. That'll be fine. And I wanna stay kind of within this so I'm not affecting the structure of that frame, nor this piece here. I'm going to take my level, get it straight, and then draw a line. There's that one. Then I'm going to do another one across the bottom and give it just a little bit of give there. All right, now I have a line here and down there. And the next step is to start cutting it. There are a lot of different tools that can cut through doors. I have an angle grinder, so I'm using this. You can use sawzalls or a variety of other tools, but you need somehow to be able to cut this out. Now, the one thing I maybe should have done is leave just a little bit more space here to attach that door, but I'm pretty sure I can attach it from the outside. I'll figure that out, but in general, a little bit extra space would have helped to mount that flap. Between my angle grinder and my tree saw, believe it or not, I finally got the chunk out Made a nice square corner right there. Just gonna clean that up just a little bit more. And now because of the heat generated by this being a wooden door, it left a lot of burn there. So I'm just gonna take some 80 grit sandpaper and a sanding block and just start cleaning that up a little bit, clean up the edges. If you have metal edges that are sharp, you probably wanna get some kind of a cover for it, like a little rubber piece that sticks over there, like the car door protectors and that, just to cover it up and make sure there's no sharp edges that's going to hurt the animal. What do you think, Baron? Are you going to fit through that, little buddy? Now, since the hole is cut, I'm going to go ahead and paint the edges with some white paint just to cover up that raw wood before I start mounting the actual flap on it. Now, I'll let the paint dry overnight before I put the flap on. Now that the hole's cut out, looks like the paint's dry. The only thing we really have left is to hang the actual flap. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. A lot of times you'll see these flaps mounted to the outside. I'm going to mount it to the inside for a couple different reasons. One reason is that if it's on the inside, it'll be closer to the bottom down here, so it should make it easier to seal. There is still a gap and I will have to do something down here to seal it so bugs and stuff don't come in. The other aspect of this is that Baron is gonna go out this way, down, but when he comes back up, it'll be a little bit more work to come up because his joints are getting old and stuff. So I think this will make it easier because he'll be pushing against it on the way out, but it should be easier for him coming back in, being on the inside. So 
I need to figure out how to mount this, hang it down, and then just trim it to size, basically. So now I'm going to look for some screws or something to hang this with. Now, ideally, I'd like to use this factory edge against that side. So that's sort of where I'd like to hang it. I may have cut that too short. This is going to be a little bit of a trick here. Let's give her a whirl. I've just got the tiniest screws I can get. I'm going to have to use a few of them to say the least, but I want to support it across. I'm going to put it in the middle of the slots so that I have a little bit of forgiveness to move it side to side and locate it. All right, there's one. We've got this coming down really nice here. That's good to see. So we'll just keep trucking across here. Now these screws are being a little bit tricky to get in here, so what I'm going to do is just put a little pilot hole in there to help get them situated. There, that makes them go in a lot easier. And again, we want that seal to be nice and clean, just like it is. You don't want to overdo it in here, but you got to get it tight enough that it'll hold. And for this one here, let's just put a hole right through at the edge. Beautiful. Perfect seal there. That's just like you want it. Now this side has to be cut down a little bit so that it's even with the door. I want Baron to be able to hit the door going in or out and have it swing evenly. So you don't want it really up against a jam. It's got to be clear of that. So it's got to be about even with the door. And then obviously the bottom needs to be taken care of too. I am going to put a couple more screws in here just for added strength. Because I want to make sure it's solid. Now we need a razor to cut this where it needs to go. All right. So if we look at the door, again, we want this thing to swing open both ways, nice and easy for him. So, so we made our line right there off the edge so that it can swing freely both ways. That edge is there, and now I'm just going to make this parallel across here. Just take a razor, follow the tape line straight across to score it. Then you can finish the final cut. And there you go. Now we just have to do that outer cut. And it looks like it's not going to need much. We just need a little bit taken out there. It actually seals pretty damn good, but we want Baron to be able to get in and out easily. We will take just a little bit off. Actually needs to clear that piece. So he can get outside. It needs to clear from the other side. So I need to go outside with this one. And that wasn't the most beautiful line, but again, this line isn't airtight by any stretch, that side. But I could probably take some weather stripping put it out there and make it a little better, but I definitely want it to be able to swing easy in and out, which I think we have. Now you can see there's a gap in here. So I bought some weather stripping that I want to put along that to try to improve that. So there's the weather stripping, and besides a little bit of a gap that I can fix with some tape, we've got our doggy door. Gansey, house. There you go. Bravo hoon, buddy. There we go. Success. Overall, a decent install I'm pretty happy with. That side seals good. I've got the bottom on it. I just should have been a little bit more careful cutting this side to get it a little bit closer and less of a gap. But I think I can get some different weather stripping tape and put it along there that will seal that better too. Baron, come on. Come on. There you go. Bravo hoon, buddy. <laughs> Bravo hoon. Come on. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.